What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Fantastic Fest 2023. I have more of the filmmakers behind VHS 85. Congratulations on your movie. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. adored it. Loved it. Every single segment in it. A plus. I have one unrelated question that I have to throw your way, Gigi, because we went to the debates the other night. I came oh. here. This is my first Fantastic Fest. Oh. I was very excited to see the debates. <laughs> now I want to participate. Given you are, I don't want to fight you though. Oh, so yeah. don't, did don't, you see my smile? I was like, finally, someone don't that fight owned. next year so I can fight. But what would you? What would be like your pointers, your tips and tricks for someone who is about to get into that ring for the very first time? Yeah, I mean, definitely have as much alcohol before. <laughs> That's good. And definitely That's good. because you gotta be in a really good mood to get in there, <laughs> and I think. The debates is the thing that helps you test your improv skills and test your comeback skills and your street smart, smart skills and your anger skills. And you see like how much passion you get gets shown in that ring. These are all things yeah. I need to work on. So maybe this just Natasha like, oh, getting oh. Yeah. I was she just, asked me to fight her. I, I said no. She I straight said no. up said no. Thank I'm not you. trying to get my ass beat in a room full of my professional peers. One of Gigi. my one of the things I stress <laughs> about with that idea is I don't know if I could actually punch someone I like. So they and like I feel like I like everyone here. Like who would they find that I'd it's be willing true. to punch? It's true. In the years before that I've been asked to do the debates, it was always someone I liked. And mm -hmm. but but things change. <laughs> things change when you're in character. And things change when, like, the insults start to happen. Okay. You become someone else. Okay. You know, but, like, uh, at this year's debate, I did not know my opponent at all. And so it was a lot of fun just hearing and, and uh, for the first time what they had to say made it easy. Not to make this whole thing yeah. about the debates, but I will <laughs> say she held her own against she you was fighting amazing. incredibly well. And also she had an impossible side of that debate for this crowd. Mm -hmm. And she, she yeah. crossed crushed it Absolutely. i was like, terrified i i've been sharing it with everybody i felt like a little a little mario fighting bowser <laughs> nothing was deep beating her down yeah, nothing she didn't feel any hits i kept hitting and hitting and she kept coming <laughs> just like how bowser does it and she just kept charging what's, it what's was the mario equivalent to you like punching me and me just blacking out right from the start <laughs> whatever that character is that's what i would have well, my, my pitch was that it should be all all the other VHS filmmakers versus Gigi, and then it'll be a fair fight, you know. So. I, I think that's great. <laughs> that would be what I would show up to watch that in a heartbeat. We keep tapping in and then just get hit, and we're just like, oh, oh shit. Okay, get in there, Dave. Yeah. And then Dave goes this in. This is a like, brilliant idea. Me. You should actually pitch this. That's I would love hilarious. this. Let's talk about your actual yeah. movie right now. I have a question for all three of you to start because one of my favorite things about the VHS movies is it feels like these producers get a bunch of filmmakers with unique voices and then support them to the point that not only can they maintain their voice, but they can bring the absolute best out of their work. So can you tell me something about the producing team behind this movie that helped you deliver your best work? I, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll just start at the beginning. Um, getting that call was yeah. awesome. Uh, I think we can all kind of share in that a little bit, but like this was, uh, I mean, we all love VHS and um, that was sort of like the, uh, they, uh, David always calls it, this, this, this moves are punk rock, man. And so VHS was like the punk rock um, uh, found footage thing. And you can tell by watching all of them that every single filmmaker is having a blast because they just let them loose. And so to be a part of that um, was kind of like a dream. Like, oh man, that'd, that'd be so cool someday. It's like, I can do, I can do shorts. I can do some gnarly shit. Um, this would be fun. I have ideas. And then um, <clears throat> I met Josh Goldblum uh, at uh, Cinepocalypse. I premiered a film there uh, called The Domestics and, um, you know, stayed in touch with him for a little bit, but then didn't hear from him over COVID. And then suddenly, what's up, bro? <laughs> um, and uh, you, 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 you want to get on a call? And I was like, Oh my God, please, this, this could be, this could be good. This could be, no, 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 no way. He's just calling to see how things are going. Josh is a great, Josh is a nice guy. So man, I'm looking for directors for VHS. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> you know, it was just one of those things where you're just like, oh my God, um, yeah. And uh, being able to pitch um, the team and then being excited about hearing that pitch and then being like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, and then again, to then be given like, go. Um, 
let us know what you need to support you and uh, we will do the best we can and um, make make cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, that's yeah. what, as filmmakers, that's what we live for, yes. is for that sort of creativity. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, incredible. And I mean, being teamed up with this amazing, these amazing, like being beside these filmmakers is kind of like, what's ha- what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was brought in by Dave Bruckner initially, um, and it was very casual conversation. And uh, he introduced the the you know f- for the context, he basically said, "Just think of it as a fuck you movie," and that really uh, resonated with me and spoke to me. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I I think um, <clears throat> first of all, what we do as directors is very solitary. You know, like I I come from crew, and um, I think I really miss that uh, that that group project feel of you know I used to be in camera department and you know you kind of have your team of people and all that kind of stuff but there's one director usually um so I think being able to work with these incredible people you know peripherally but still it felt like we were like okay we're all we're kind of doing a thing together that's kind of cool um you know I didn't even meet Mike until you were in your mix but I knew what you were doing we ha- we heard about each other you know we're like oh Scott's doing this you know there's a mysticism behind it yeah, and, and they're like, a real person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, real humans. But but also like I think it, it coming together in that really beautiful or, beautiful organic way um, as a group was really fun. So so that was really special. Um, and then I would also say like we we work within extremely strict and I, you know Gigi and I talk about this a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, just we're kind of working within the confines of the industry, which is you know it purports to be a creative industry, but in fact is is you're kind of creating a product, right? And, and we are sort of the we we are like birthing from product to creativity back to product um and i think to have something that is a fuck you movie was so liberating and joyous even though i was very scared of the found footage of it all in the beginning um you know that that is it's a simple thing to say but to actually be able to experience it is a truly 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 a gift so i'm very grateful to be a part of it beautiful answer (laughs) how about for you Gigi? I kidnapped everyone okay. to let me be part of it. Um, no, I'm kidding. No, no, I ate them for breakfast. That's a no, great idea for a wraparound uh, segment for so. the next VHS so. movie. No, uh, listen, I think my experience was a little different, but just to add to, to theirs as well, I think all of us can say that we grew up watching five of these. This is the sixth one of VHS and getting the opportunity to be part of the cool kids club is for all of us like that hardcore like whoa i made it i'm here and so so for me it was something i just always wanted to maybe not be part of the anthology but since vhs2 watching it in film school i was like one day i want to be just friends with these guys i want to be part of that and uh so my experience, I, I didn't get an invite or a call. I just crashed their set on 99. I, I, I legit just showed up because I got to give it to Cargill who wrote with Scott Dreamkill. He called me knowing I was in LA and said, you're in LA, right? I was like, yes. Also, why are you calling me? This is cool. <laughs> and he let me know. So, you know, we've shot our VHS. Yes, there's a new one coming out. And I'm here to tell you there's space for one more and it has to be you. And that meant the world to me that he he said that to me. And he told me like a true jefe that he is, how to make that happen. He said, go to Burbank, meet Josh Goldblum, the producer, just show up. They're shooting the one now and just go tell him that, that it has to be you. And I, I, show, I went straight to their set and knocked on the door like how indie filmmakers do it yeah that's and, punk rock yeah and, and, and that's and legit punk rock it's yeah. totally how you do it and i showed up josh was like uh sure come to the set what do you got i'm like i don't know what what, what do you got huh what date do you got and as soon as he told me 85 i said i'll come back tomorrow and i showed up the next day with an idea so it was super cool. Was that the, I, I'll go down the row again for each of your individual shorts. Was that idea, the idea we now see in the final film? Correct. No, totally. As soon as he's at 85, uh, I, I left the set, gave him a big hug and said, thank you. And I immediately called my my best friend, Rainer, who's produced everything I've done. I'm like, 85, it has to be Mexican, yo. What do we do? And he he's the one that actually said to me, well, the earthquake in Mexico City. And I remember having that gasp reaction because I know what it's like. I My whole family lived it. It's the biggest fear in the city. I was like, there's no brainer. 
but we're gonna put that gg twist at the end you yes. know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so it just was a, a no-brainer it was very a, very effective it was awesome. twist this is something i'm always curious about with found footage movies i'll throw it your way just because it feels like you have more movement maybe than anyone else does in their shorts but when you're designing your shots what is the key to making sure it does have like an authentic found footage feel where it does feel like someone's holding the camera and running but while ensuring that the audience does not get dizzy and has a sense of geography that's such a man that's uh that's a question we can talk about for hours yeah. but like for hours hours because there's tons of techniques that we will find our, ourselves that is so different from each other but i can tell you that in mine specifically was completely feeling organically the emotions of the cast mm -hmm. and feeling what is adrenaline rush to survive because mine was very inspired by rec it's real time There's no, there's no moment in time. There's no space later. It's just the one time only. So for the camera, it really was who's reacting. And it, if you're the cameraman, how do you react to the situation? What are you go going to want to film? Or maybe are you distracted, but the thing is filming something that you're not looking at. So it was a lot of feeling the cast and um, it was our cinematographer holding the camera while being hugged by the lead actor to just feel his energy and how he would react to who is talking would make our cinematographer move the camera. So that's how we did it, uh, just to just to feel the energy of how tragic it, it is. Oh God, yeah. that feels like such a warm, loving way to make such a horrific short film. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, emphasizing the actors, I'll go to you now, Natasha, because it does feel like your your idea needs a pitch perfect lead performance or it doesn't work. And I believe you've worked <laughs> yeah. with Siobhan before, right? Yeah, Siobhan is one of my collaborators. Yeah, I love Exceptional. her dearly. Exceptional. Yeah. What is something about your previous collaborations that signaled to you she'd be perfect in the role? But then also I want to know something she did while shooting that made you go like, damn, we know each other, but I never even realized you were capable of that. Yeah, Siobhan is a really interesting actor because on the one hand, she's incredibly beautiful, um, very polished. And so she will often get cast as, you know, this, you know, perfect, stunning, gorgeous, model-esque, you know, um, and, and we really wanted to go the opposite direction with this, you know, because performance art gets mean, it gets dirty, it gets um, raw. Um, and, and she actually, I think, was that was the part she was the most... Um, freaked out about and um, <laughs> so the performance is very influenced by um, uh, work of uh, artists um, from the era but also a lot of the work that my own mother did um, as I was growing up so it was like sort of a love letter in some ways to those real people who were doing that work and you know like raised me in a lot of ways but uh, we watched a lot of actually my mom's old archival um, archival videos of her performances you know she's like getting naked on stage you're like there's my mom um, <laughs> uh, but but Siobhan really um, she she had I think some intense conversations with, with my mother and uh, about sort of like vulnerability and how do you um you know feel the confidence and stuff and I think my mom just said like oh no you're you leave your body <laughs> she's like no no you're 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 performing a seance like you are traveling to another dimension you know these shamanistic performances that these people were doing at the time um so yeah I think that was really fun for me to see Siobhan she's a very classical you know she's Shakespeare she's very polished and uh you know wants to know her lines before and she wants everything to be perfect I'm like no 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 It's a performance. We wrote a performance. See this part where it says she performs the incantation? That's a that's a three minute sequence. And that's all yeah. you, baby girl. Like <laughs> we set up mics else. for her. She was doing we taught her how to um we were doing live distortion. So the film is a live performance that we archived basically. So including, we made a bunch of samples for her that she was manipulating live. So a lot of the effects and, uh, you know, two mics that were sort of interacting with each other. So she really had to learn a lot of these sort of avant-garde in the 80s techniques. Um, and yeah, she got she got a little she got a little messy. So was it a situation <laughs> where your audience was actually seeing what she was doing in the room? Um, for parts of it. Yeah, okay. for parts of it. We did have a whole day that was just her. And I mean, she, I was in the audience because it's found footage. So I was like, I'm going to sit here. <laughs> I happen to know someone else in your audience and I'll always 
always uh, take an opportunity to shout out Andrew Guy because he, oh, he is wonderful. Andrew. What kind of direction do you give your audience members so they could at least start to picture the wild things that so happened? So they at did the have her. Home? Sorry, I understand your question now. Yes, so um, they did have her. So we shot them on the last day so she could kind of relax. I think she performed it in sweatpants or something, but she's, she gave them a show. So that's all, that's all, that's real live reaction. And I basically just told them, uh, it's, they're all actors because we shot in LA. <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but yeah, I just said, you know, this is this is uh, just experience it. Just experience it. React as you would react. You know, don't hold back. Um, and yeah, she did. She did give them a live show. So, yeah, I'm going to squeeze in one more question. Stop me if it gets a little too spoilery, maybe. But can you tell us anything about the evolution of the design of your your demon? Is that what it looked like in your head day one when you started picturing this idea? Or is that something that changed? Well, I always knew she was female. I always knew that she was going to be a, a lady god, um, and uh, and fierce and warlike um, and and humanoid, but not entirely humanoid. Um, so we did a lot of early concept art. I kind of wanted to also give Siobhan a mental image of what she was seeing, um, because she was acting against um, a blank screen. So that was all created after the fact. Um, but yeah, it was it was honestly. I have to also nod to to David, um, who was very involved creatively with with really pushing us. And pushing and pushing and I, it's it's kind of rare to find a creative producer who is truly creative <laughs> um oh, and yeah. so i really appreciate being pushed because we would kind of come to the table and be like we like this this is finished question mark <laughs> i say no it's not go back to the drawing board okay okay so we go back and we just kept pushing and, and making her dirtier and raw and um you know but yeah we started with i know she's female i know she's she's tall she's like 12 feet tall in the virtual world and um we kind of uh developed her from there but I, I like her a lot so yeah. so effective yeah. I love her already and I want I more her and of Mitlan her Mitlan should have a wedding well, isn't it interesting that our pieces are so I mean it's a summoning it's like we, we're bringing these these gods back which I think is there's something kind of cool about that well, there yeah. is um there is a, like in addition to the wraparound at least it does feel like there is connective tissue even though each short in this movie feels so uniquely your own which I appreciate Mike for years now you were talking a little bit about when you first joined the project when you first signed on did you know you'd have the opportunity to like essentially make two yeah so <clears throat> that was that was kind of part of the pitch um i knew that i wanted to have these two pieces that felt very different the the first part i had very very clearly in my head the second part was kind of like i was figuring it out i knew i wanted to go um i knew they wanted i, I wanted to i don't want to get too spoilerly but like i wanted to have some sort of a, a a revenge payoff but i wasn't quite sure what that was and i knew i really wanted it to feel completely different so again you did feel like here's the next segment um and when i pitched that to to david and josh and brad they were all kind of like Oh yeah, that's that's cool. Like let's do, let's go, um, and so that was that was fun to figure out, and then fun to kind of discover like to do something against against the norm of like what you would expect that killer to be and do. You know what I mean? And what and what they're a part of. So, so um, cool. lots of lots of fun exploration there, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have a like a broader found footage question for you. That's nice and safe before I ask one that might veer too close to spoiler <laughs> territory. Yeah, sure. When you have a group of friends who essentially get picked off one by one, what is it like figuring out the perfect camera person, the perfect storyteller for that story? Um, that's a great question. Yeah, that's question. that's that's, that's really good. That um, I knew I wanted so our segment sort of has this like it's like there's like a very kind of a light love story in it um like like new love like meeting somebody or maybe somebody that you've known briefly but like kind of like smitten by and i wanted to be on the side of the camera i wanted i wanted the, the cameraman to be the one who's sort of like um smitten by this 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 girl and how it doesn't look like it's gonna work out um but they end up kind of like you know hitting it off, and it's and it's fun. Like, like the to me it was like the the whole like um, the the camera hand up. Do you want to try? Like that to me was like a really sweet moment, and I really wanted to build this sort of like that sort of um, um, 
character with with the cameraman and uh with rob um robin robin <laughs> um and uh and let that kind of blossom throughout the movie up until when she you know takes the chance to to go skiing and he's just he's kind of like yeah you got this come on it's so good and you end up really um it was important to me to um enjoy being with these people sort of like you were with a group of friends you're not with a um a dysfunctional group of friends which i feel like is such an easy thing to fall into in horror where you just you kind of hate everybody and you're kind of just you're you're waiting for each person to get picked off right. it's it's far worse to like feel either even even to feel neutral because you're like okay whatever yeah these people are, are fine and then to see something terrible happen to them because you're like none of them deserve any of this right now and so and, and that's and that's the point you know what i mean the point is is that something bad could happen at any moment and i think we're living in a time where that's very very true mm -hmm. yes yeah. that that element of it did freak me out quite a bit so this is the question that would get a little spoilery but i am often mesmerized by the artistry that goes into gore and makeup effects so can you maybe give us one non-spoiler example of something you did on set in that respect at least, that made you think like, I cannot believe this is what it takes to make it look like that on screen in the finished product. I mean, so much of it is like, okay, so it's, it starts by, again, like having like the, uh, the dream case scenario where you're like, okay, I know that this is what's gonna happen. Um, I go to my special effects guy, uh, Ryan Shadley, who's, you know, Minnesota native. For both Minnesotans, he's an incredible uh, special effects makeup prosthetics designer. And I'm like, so this is, this is what I want to do. And I don't want it to look trashy. I don't want it to look um, exploitive. I don't want it to be like, you know, I, let's, let's go like, um, yeah, let's go. Let's try to make this as kind of real and, and, and in a way kind of icky as possible. And, he, and I was like, because I really don't want to do this digitally. And I know that that's, that's this could be a tall order, but I need you to tell me no, because this is what I want. And he goes, oh, yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. And I, again, like, I don't want to get into what, yeah. what that is, because I think it's once you watch the movie, you'll you'll know what that moment is. And that was um, it was challenging, but uh, super rewarding because again on camera effects when you're there with everybody um everybody's experiencing it everybody's reacting to it and you just like mm -hmm. you feel it's it's a it's electrifying it's there's energy you're just like oh my god this is this is happening things are it takes more time sure but in the end totally totally worth it it's excellent yeah really 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 a plus job every single shot in that respect. I loved it. All right, I'm gonna end with one broader Fantastic Fest question for all of you, because again, this is my first year and I've heard about this here, but feeling it as something different, it basically being an environment of horror lovers, people in the community that aren't just here to enjoy films, but also to uplift each other. So can you tell me something you saw in someone else's film here that you thought was incredible and has now inspired you and maybe you'll carry it forward to your next project? I really enjoyed the shorts box. Um, I, I think uh, I don't expose myself to shorts as much as I should. Um, and I, there was one block in particular that was a uh, indigenous voices shorts um, that I, I thought was really kind of beautiful to um, see the diversity within that category. And with the shorts program, a lot of younger, you know, a lot of like emerging filmmakers and stuff. Um, so I always find that kind of exciting to see um, who's out there, who's sort of like dipping their toe into directing and filmmaking. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed actually the the shorts. I mean, of course, the features are fabulous, but you I'm know, always uh, here for shorts. Yeah, the shorts were cool. The, those programs never get the credit they deserve. They were cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I watched um, stop motion, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I mean, it's great because like I I love. I'm a huge fan of um, the slow burn that turns into something gross. You know what I mean? Because when you start with gross where do you go from there you know what i mean because then it's kind of like well i mean i feel like we've been witnessing this for 90 minutes now and you really have to do something blah, at, you know to 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 kind of beat you're almost you're almost you're upping yourself throughout but again uh what was really great about stop motion was it did kind of have this uh a little bit of a shining vibe um where it's this woman who's kind of losing herself 
in this stop motion work, which gets really, really like icky. And then finally what she ends up doing, you're just like, like I, I haven't, I haven't squirmed at something uh, yeah. really recently. And like, it's, it's not even that it was that gory per se, but it's the actions and the things that she does that were, that were like, you know, you're just like, okay, God. <sighs> the blade is getting closer to the leg. It's cl- oh, oh, yep, yep, here it is. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I want to see this movie. So, it's it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you it can tell, awesome. you can tell there's, there was just, there was a lot of care, there was a lot of thought, and um, I really, again, I really appreciate that when, like, a filmmaker will, will take their time and let you just get in, and then finally just say, <laughs> and you're just like, stop! God dang it! You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's and so and they and they did it and they did it and 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 that was really fun. Very just appropriate description of that movie, right yeah. there. Yeah. And I gotta see that. Yeah, see it's that. wonderful. You know, I can talk about many of the films I've seen here, but this is my fifth year back. Uh, I've been back with. I have three features. I've been back as a shorts jury. Uh, my first year here was with my short film, El Gigante. And I just got to say, it's it's not even just one film in particular. It, it's the festival itself. I really say that from the bottom of my heart to the people who put this festival together. It is so perfectly organized in the way that this is the place. It's not just genre films. It's easy to say that. It's where you're going to see from bizarre to so much heart to the absolute most disturbing you're gonna see a rainbow of weird in this festival and you're also going to see so many familiar faces coming back coming back you're gonna see true fans of cinema true fans of genre and all the filmmakers always come back here everybody comes back here because it's very welcoming and it's only at a place like Fantastic Fest, like the Alamo, that is a very particular festival that is only to go see movies. You go to festivals, I hate to say it, just to go party and have your premiere and that's where it ended for your film. If you have time for see, seeing something else, great, but this is curated that from the morning to the night is movies back to back and you get a chance to see them a second time. So. You come here to watch what you don't go see in the theater. You come here to watch movies that push boundaries, movies that get tiny distributions because of how odd they are. You come here to see things that are not commercial. Mm -hmm. And it's there's a film for everybody at the end of each year that I've been back. And I got to say this year, it was still amazing how many people remember my short film. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not it's, it's not happened to me in any other festival that they're like, I remember your short from seven years ago. When are you going to hear that? Mm. So it's that's, that's the me. praise I have to give. Oh, yeah. And what a perfect Feel place it. to to premiere this movie, right? Like one hundred percent. This is a whack. Like this is not necessarily what I would describe as broad appeal film, <laughs> but to see it in the in the theater completely come alive, like a film doesn't come to life until it's in the theater and shared with other people. So I think for all of us to finally like truly see the thing grow and breathe and start to have its own energy and electricity at this festival was like truly the perfect place for I us to watch it. I couldn't agree yeah. more. And this is my second time that on purpose. I hadn't seen the film mm -hmm. because I wanted to experience it with the fantastic audience. Mm -hmm. So I did that last year with Satanic Hispanics. I'm like, I gotta do this again because <laughs> you felt everyone's energy. And so yeah. watching our, our movie VHS 85, the laughing, the fuck yes, the oohs, the ooh, the, the all, I, I was doing that with them. Yeah. So it's it's truly you you are here to be a fan you're gonna get to experience it a fantastic fest is a very special place but yes. i have a feeling you're gonna get a very loud reaction at your next festival too yeah, yeah. beyond Thank fest you. is the next so, stop right yeah. here we yeah. go oh, it's the same sick puppies at beyond oh, yes. fest so. oh yes I can't that, wait. that is That's my gonna be a crowd first that me. is my community oh you're gonna live it i can't it's wait so it's fun. it's gonna be a good time but in particular like what you say about fantastic fest to actually feel it firsthand now like it is incredibly accurate and i have a feeling i will be following in your footsteps and coming back to this festival Festival for years and years. Huge congratulations on thank VHS you. 85. Thank it's so good. Uh, thank if you're you. not in LA at Beyond Fest, keep an eye out for this movie. Do not miss it. I will guarantee you, you will love it.